was that noise? Huh? What was that noise? Nothing here. Venom of the Brazilian wandering spider. Soon a most exquisite pain will engulf your entire body. Your limbs will be paralyzed, your lungs cease to draw breath. Eventually your heart will stop beating. Ah, but what fun would that be? Not a beating at all. The boss is a friend. such as you've never experienced before. <sighs> Come into my web. It is time <sighs> for you to feel the fear. Snake, are you all right? You've been shot with a poison bolt. The poison is spreading throughout your body. Your life is going to keep decreasing unless you do something about it. Hurry and neutralize the poison. Go into the survival viewer and use Cure to give yourself a serum injection. The serum will neutralize the poison, but don't forget to treat the bolt wound itself as well. To treat a bolt wound, you'll need your knife, a styptic, and a disinfectant. Use your knife to dig out the bolt, and then apply styptic and disinfectant to the wound. Follow those steps, and the wound should heal right up. Now start the treatment. Hurry! The fear is using something called stealth camouflage to conceal himself. But you should be able to spot him if you look closely in first-person view. Watch for rustling grass, falling leaves, anything that will betray his presence. 
Find him and shoot him in first-person view. The fierce stealth camouflage apparently drains his stamina rather quickly. Once he's used up his stamina, he'll have no choice but to go looking for food. That's your chance. Throw one of your food items to set a trap for him. Plant a claymore or some TNT and lure him into it, or lure him into one of his own traps. Giving him poisoned or rotten food may also work well. Used properly, your food can be a weapon. You can knock down the fear's bolts with your gun or knife. If you can't dodge a bolt, go into first-person view and shoot it down.
According to Granin, you should be able to get to the mountains through a passage located deep in the jungle beyond the warehouse. Start out by going back to the warehouse. Use the key you got from Granin to open the door and proceed into the jungle. You remember where the door is, don't you? It's directly north of the door you went in when you came from the aqueduct. According to Granin... Snake, you've got an arrow stuck in you. When you get shot with an arrow, your maximum life will go down depending on how bad it is, so watch out. You can let the wound heal naturally, or you can treat it using Cure in the Survival Viewer to make it heal right away. To treat an arrow wound, first use your knife to dig the arrow out. Then disinfect the wound and apply styptic to stop the flow of blood. Once that's all done, the arrow wound should heal right up. I see you found a Spatza. Spa. Spatza. Spatza? Right. Interesting name. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. So paramedic. What? What kind of mushroom is a Spatza? Uh. You really want to know? I guess so. Okay. Let's see. The Spatza. Yeah. It's gray. Hmm. And it grows on the ground? Yeah, and? That's all. That's all? That's all the guide says. Okay, so I don't know that much about it. Why don't you eat one and see? It might be pretty tasty. Eat one and see? What do I look like, a lab rat? Shh. What? What did I say? What if the rats hear you? You'll hurt their feelings. <sighs> Paramedic. Yeah? I ate one of those spots of mushrooms you were talking about. Really? How did it taste? I passed out. Seriously? Yeah. So that's why they call it the bringer of sleep. What? Oh, I looked the word spatza up afterwards and found out it means bringer of sleep in Russian. Well... But anyway, the reason the spatza puts you to sleep when you eat it is because it contains a type of anesthetic substance similar to an alkaloid. Maybe if you soak a handkerchief or something in it, you could use it to put the enemy to sleep. Eating a spatza and falling asleep might cause your life and stamina to recover as well. Why don't you find a safe spot and try it out? I see you found a bicol scaly tooth. The bicol scaly tooth mushroom is used as an antidote to poison. It usually grows on the trunks of trees, so look for it there. How does it taste? I think you're going to be disappointed. Damn. 
Oh, quit your whining. You know what they say, good medicine tastes bitter. Snake, whatever happens to you, make sure you leave a descendant, okay? Are you saying you want to have my baby? No. I'm saying that in the 21st century, the genes of soldiers like you are going to be in high demand. Genes? Uh-huh. Remember when Watson and Crick discovered the double helix structure of DNA back in 1953? Ah, no. You know, they won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for it the year before last. Of course, you have to feel sorry for Pauline and Franklin. They were researching the exact same thing. Sorry, I don't follow. Inside every living creature are little blueprints called genes. Through the union of the sperm and egg cells, these blueprints are transformed and inherited by the next generation. That's why parents and children resemble each other. The concept of genes was first proposed over a hundred years ago by Mendel, but he didn't know what they were exactly. For a while, it was thought that chromosomes were composed not of deoxyribonucleic acid, but of proteins called polypeptides. Later, it was shown that deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, was a biological macromolecule. Then 11 years ago, Watson and Crick discovered that DNA had a double helix structure. Yeah, this is all fascinating stuff, but what exactly does it have to do with me? The inherent characteristics of any given individual are determined by his or her genes. By duplicating a set of superior genes, a separate body with the same set of characteristics, a clone can be created. But genes don't control a person's fate. That's true, but having an offspring that's genetically identical to the parent is more efficient, right? You can expect better results that way. More efficient? You can't mass-produce human beings. Maybe, but now that we know the true nature of genes, human cloning is that much closer to reality. Nuclear transplanting is already theoretically possible, so one day... My genes are going to be a valuable commodity. Exactly. They'd never let that happen. Just think. Even if your body dies, you survive and go on to bigger and better accomplishments. If you think about it, it's kind of an honor. Does that kind of technology seriously appeal to you? Well, I am a doctor. Hmm. I can't condone it on moral grounds, but I'm fascinated by the possibilities. Especially when I see such an excellent specimen as yourself. Yeah, well, thanks for the compliment, but it doesn't make me feel any better. Don't be so glum. It's not like it's going to happen anytime soon. We'll just have to wait and see. Snake, that area is inhabited by the poison dart frog. The poison dart frog is native to the tropical rainforests of Central and South America. They normally grow between two and five centimeters in length, but for some reason the ones in that area seem to be much bigger than that. Poison dart frogs are known to carry a potent neurotoxin called Pomeliotoxin. Long ago, people used the poison to coat their arrows for hunting. Watch out, because if you eat one, you'll get food poisoning. There seem to be traps planted throughout that area, and they look a little... primitive. Yeah, but this is their territory. Why would they need this many traps here? Maybe it's part of some kind of tactical research. Tactical research? Yeah. As I'm sure you know, the Soviet Union is leading a worldwide revolution among communist forces all over the globe. But a lot of the countries involved don't have the necessary funds and industrial technology, so they need tactics that are both effective and economical. That's what they're researching? Yeah, and traps are one of the best ways to do that. I'll bet that place is one of their testing grounds. Clappers, arrows, pendulums, all of these traps are set off by applying force to a rope. Don't touch the ropes and you'll be fine. Use rolling to get over them or just crawl under them. Either way ought to work. If you do set off a trap and an arrow or a spike pendulum comes flying your way, you can still dodge it by immediately diving out of the way. Pit traps and snares are camouflaged into the ground to make them harder to detect. But if you look carefully enough, you can see them through the disguise. Try stalking to proceed with extra caution. In any case, if you think there might be traps lying around, keep a close eye on the ground and stay alert.
I see you've found some fly agaric mushrooms. The fly agaric is a relative of the death cap mushroom that grows only in that region. You'll find it growing on the ground, but it's poisonous. So if you pick one up, don't eat it. If you do eat one, go into the survival viewer immediately and use cure to take some antidote. The poisons found in the fly agaric include phallotoxins and amatoxins. It says here that when you eat it, the initial symptoms include nausea, stomach pain, and diarrhea. Finally, your liver and kidneys will break down into a sponge-like substance and you die. Sounds like a horrible way to die. Isn't it? Yeah. So how does it taste? Huh? How does it... Were you listening to me? The fly agaric is poisonous. I heard you, but if I did eat it, it might taste good, right? I give up.
Huh? What's that? Huh?